What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? My name is Hugo Freeman, and I am going to watch Everything Wrong with Incredibles 2 in 16 minutes or less. You know, I watched the movie, and I loved it, because that's the only Fantastic Four movie we're ever going to get until Fox. No, Disney. No. Owns Fox. Uh, you know. Because, you know, Fox owns Fantastic Four and X-Men and Deadpool, which is part of X-Men. Anyways, let's do, let's do this. One, two, three, go. Spoilers! Do. 45 seconds of incredible logos. Sure, just about the raddest logos I've ever seen, but logos nonetheless. Agent Rick Dicker and Terry. Tommy Lee Jones. Rick Dicker! This is a clever way to catch the audience up on the end of a movie that occurred 14 years prior, but it's still underminer overkill. I mean, this scene basically reinforces to the public that they need the Incredibles version of the Sokovia Accords, but the character otherwise really has nothing to do with the plot. Also, it took 14 years for a sequel to this movie. Crap, I'll leave 14 years. Yes. Oh, hey, I thought that was just for anniversaries that is true. and other special occasions, that is true. Bob. Why didn't they call this movie The Incredibles 2, considering the first movie was The Incredibles? Like, did Sean Parker come in and tell Brad Bird specifically to drop the the? Ah. Oh man, this is almost my favorite part. I think he's about to fight the Balrog. <laughs> That's correct. Movie's telling me that everyone survives this mass bombing. <laughs> Meet Jackhammer! I don't care what these jackhammery fists are made of, given Mr. Incredible's super strength, there is no way this is a fight at all. You're not sticking me with babysitting! If you told me that the next Incredibles movie would also be an Adventures in Babysitting sequel, I don't think I would have believed you. The monorail! Deus Ice Monorelia? Stop! Why are these cars even on the road? It's impossible to miss the giant ass sentient drill that's been on the road for several minutes, let alone all of the quakes it's been causing. This is a great save by Stretch Momstrong and all, but it sure is a good thing that the passenger had the split second reflexes and foresight to get her car door open, even though there was no way she could have known it would help. We didn't start this fight. Well, you didn't finish it either. Did you stop the Underminer from inflicting more damage? God damn it. I'm sick of this human outrage over superheroes saving everyone bullshit. Yes, the original movie was the first to do it, and it's probably done least defensively in this franchise. But you'd think Incredibles 2 would have moved on from using a story point that Batman v Superman had already drilled into the ground. I'm done. I know they had to replace Bud Lucky for this character, and it's not like Jonathan Banks doesn't have a great voice, but does he always have to play the tired ex-cop that's too old for this shit? We talked about this. You're not old enough to decide about these things. This is another plot point that I thought was resolved in the last movie. Didn't they realize that they all needed each other to take down a threat? And that was even the reason they all put on their masks when the Underminer showed up? This movie's great, but it definitely does replay the hits a lot. You know where my suit and ties are? Burned up when the, the jet, jet destroyed, destroyed our, our house. house. You know, the cops were just talking about the banks being insured, and Bob used to work in insurance. So why don't the PARs have any coverage on their house? They have to rely on Dicker to set them up? Wasn't Nationwide around in the 1960s? I know the drill. Why is Violet just suspicious now with the boots when the super suits were clearly visible at the top of the jackets the whole time? My father was so proud that I was even remotely connected to you guys. He was your top supporter. Given the stuff Winston rattles off here that Daddy Dever endeavored to help the supers, wouldn't they already know who he was? An eccentric billionaire is interested in superheroes because his parents were shot and killed by a seemingly random act of violence? Sounds bat I mean, sounds familbat. I mean, bats for Batman bat. Also, what the sh these asshole robbers made it all the way inside the house of what has to be one of the richer people in the country, saw him on the superhero phone that he showed it off to everyone, but still couldn't keep their shooting boners from going off. Also, also, you could say that the robbers were emboldened because the supers were just banned. But if they knew that, how did Denver not know that? I'm just saying this crux of the plot narrative is super thin. Or dad could have taken mom to the safe room as soon as he knew there was trouble. I disagree strongly! Wait, they also had a safe room? Why didn't he install the super phones in that sh If the Denver dad had any sense of phone placement, he'd have saved countless lives, super rights, and his daughter's pending villainy. She's good. She uh, really a credit to her, but uh... Mr. Incredibly Sexist. <laughs> now you get the offer of a lifetime and you don't know? This is an important discussion and all, but why aren't they back at the pool having it? Isn't this a one-room setup? Even if the kids are in a separate room, the walls have got to be thin as around here. <laughs> Why is the remote for every single feature for this room all the way upstairs and completely out of reach? Also, there is no way that remote contains enough buttons to do all the that Dash was able to do. 
Wait, there's a water opening directly under the couch? This is about the stupidest moat placement in the history of moat placements. <laughs> Propose polygamy. No sugar bombs on my watch. But why were they just right out there in the open then? It's not like Helen put them out there. She's the one pushing everyone to be healthy. So, mom is going out illegally to explain why she shouldn't be illegal. Violet would be super cinema sense. I know it's Pixar and all, but as Shakespeare said, a poop joke by any other name would smell as poop or something. Dude, there's a lot of pedestrian traffic behind Helen here, but nobody even gives a passing glance to an active illegal superhero. In costume? There's a shortcut. Cut through the culvert up ahead. Elastigirl is able to do this at top speed in a new motorcycle in an unfamiliar city with a moment's notice. And she's now stretching my credulity further than her body can reach. And just like that, Brad Bird proves he's still a god of animated action. Clever touches like a splitting bike for a stretchy super camera angles that emphasize the craziness of the close movements without ever losing the overall geography of the scene. Total shots of pure glorious cinematic adrenaline course throughout this movie and I couldn't stop myself from taking a few sins off if I wanted to. <laughs> Didn't Helen just say that the bike was electric? Did she juice it up with a tank full of flammable diesel just for old time's sake? Honey, why are Don't you- Don't say anything. Wow, ain't that convenient. All of Bob's kids are having very age specific issues on the first night he's watching them. Also, why didn't Bob know that Violet was set up to be stood up by Tony on the date? Even if he didn't specifically ask Rick Ermintrout to take care of Tony's memory, he had to know something would be done, right? Let me tell you something. I'm about to take a sin off for this raccoon Jack-Jack fight because it's goddamn glorious. <laughs> but before we do this, I've got to send the fact that the raccoon's there at all, considering that the pars just moved in and wouldn't have produced enough trash to get its attention. Okay, now that that's out of the way, begin. Told you. Oh man, this Jack Jack versus the Rock Rack section is like Pixar somehow snuck one of its best short films into a larger film and still had it make complete sense as part of the story. <laughs> Having said that, this raccoon survives all this <laughs> I was cool letting the raccoon be a little more human than seems likely because, you know, cartoons got a cartoon. But when you have the vermin purposely tip over the grill because it somehow knows the ash will put out the flame, you've officially pushed me over the hedge. I said to run away train! That's fantastic, that honey. Was Batman. And on your first night. I get that we have to establish a bit of a strain on the relationship between Bob and Helen here, but ultimately it plays a very small role in this movie, other than to prove how badass the females in this story are. We already knew that, trust me. Let's move on to more of that Jack-Jack. Did you forget? <laughs> forget? What? How did Rick remove only the parts of Tony's memory that involve Violet? Of all the technology presented in this franchise, shouldn't this be one of the most powerful? Get ready for you. Hey, stretch a leg. Hey, we'll handle the stretching for puns around here. Miss definitely will end up being the surprise villain in this movie. We are controlled by screens. If Helen instinctively knows not to look at the screen, why couldn't she just reach out and move the monitor out of Chad's eyesight? Apparently, as soon as the stimulus is removed, everyone's all good. Maybe try that before resorting to slapping the dude in the face. Why are there fucking regular ass screens on the panel of a helicopter in 1962. I'm pretty sure even the top models only had like four sets of analog dials that barely worked. Man, there sure are a lot of unoccupied buildings for Helen to crash things into in this city. In support of you. What does your sign say? What the hell? Who is this Stepford daughter? And why did she make this sign? They don't look hypnotized and are never seen again in the movie. So again I say, what the hell? All right, stop talking. Show her. This is somehow a combination of the pronoun game and a you better take a look at this cliche. And it's definitely doubly annoying. The other supers are right in the next room. I am called Brick. Nice to meet you, Brick. They were right in the middle of the introductions and there aren't many supers here. So why'd they start the party before they all met? Dicker. Yeah. Dicker? I don't even know her. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Oh. What I meant to say was guy wears a Hawaiian shirt and has a drink with a little umbrella to symbolize retirement, even though he's not even on vacation yet, cliche. What do you know about Tony? Not much. Popular, plays sports, music. Parents own the happy platter. Kid works there part time. Jesus, what qualifies as knowing a lot about a subject? The frequency of their bowel movements? Seems like Dicker's got a ton of useful information immediately at his fingertips. Given the sheer amount of wiring and satellite antenna on this building, which would be very weird in 1962, how has this place not been investigated at all before now? This apartment is located in a high-rise building that requires massive exposition of whatever the tenant and or its evil hypnotic overlord is plotting. It's in the charter and everything. Also, look, I know we're in a movie that uses a lot of possibly anachronistic technology, but maglev trains were implemented way after 1962. Like, they only started functional use in the 1980s. I'm not saying it didn't 
didn't give us a terrific action sequence, but did it have to use this device? Welcome to the oops I forgot my own superpowers portion of today's film. Why would Elastigirl ever run after anyone when she could just stretch out and catch them, especially if they're this close? What's going on? What did I do? What did you guys do to me? Your tracker worked like a charm, Evelyn. Man, this is so annoying. Helen's been shown to be much more thoughtful than this. And she knows someone's been using hypnosis for nefarious purposes. Given this dude's response, she doesn't even give the idea that he's not Screenslaver a second thought until much later. Also, Screenslaver is a badass looking villain. And the fact that he's given like 10 seconds of actual screen time definitely qualifies as a sin. They said it was beyond repair. Hey. They said it was destroyed. Long they said it was... That's my car! Never pronoun game in anger, Bob. Never pronoun game in anger. Yeah. <laughs> wow! Oh, sir, what's happening what? here? Yes, it does, and from any distance, and without a millisecond of lag, because apparently each remote comes pre-installed with a handy convenience chip. Launch rockets! Launch rockets! Launch the rockets! I'm not I love this scene, but I simply can't ignore Dash's bloodlust here. I mean, he sees it's a crowded f***ing room. I've got to succeed, so she can succeed, so we can succeed! I get it, Bob! Bob clearly shows how committed he is to this funny but ultimately boring B story. Put one red thing in and a load of whites, and now everything's... Pink. This list of bad parenting cliches reminds me that Helen's being well paid for her exploits, right? They have to have a living wage to afford food and services. And if it's coming from Dever, then you're damn sure it's a lot. So even though Bob's trying to be a super dad here, why couldn't he send the laundry out? <laughs> so Jack-Jack has all the powers, right? Like, he's better than Superman. He can travel to different dimensions for long periods of time, fly, shoot lasers, do beast mode, multiply, grow to any size, catch fire, and I'm sure whatever else is needed for comedic effect in this movie. My point is, this should be a bigger deal. He has all the powers! His reign was short, huh? And not suspiciously so at all, ha ha ha. Just now, at a worldwide summit, leaders from more than a hundred of the world's top countries have agreed to make superheroes legal again! It's been what, a couple weeks? Pretty sure changing laws takes a bit more time and bureaucracy than that. I mean, weed is still illegal in most of the country, and the majority of Americans changed their mind on that during the Lebowski administration. Also, damn, they got those super powerful people together faster than the dinosaur auction in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> what if the pizza guy is really a pizza guy, but it was controlled by the screens built into his class? You are good. So you're telling me the character who always seemed a little too nonchalant and played into the female narrative and whose name could actually be pronounced Evil Endeavor was the bad guy? Consider me shocked. Shocked, I say! Also, that's all it takes. Evelyn didn't even hit a button or do anything other than put the glasses on, which were clearly not functioning before. These things aren't just technological marvels, they're downright magic. He slept while I worked in a creative fever. So how did Edna get Jack-Jack all domesticated then? <laughs> Bob was out overnight, but the baby also slept. So she whipped his ass into shape in like five hours? I would resist the temptation to stretch. The temperature around you is well below freezing. So Elastigirl's kryptonite is the entire month of January? Since when is that a thing? I'm using the technology to destroy people's trust in it. Like I'm using superheroes. Wow, seems like we arrived at the unnecessary villainous exposition cliche a little too quick, eh? Trust me, it's not the last time that it'll feel like the movie's rushing to resolve all the plot lines. Like, even Tony comes back into the picture. Superheroes keep us weak! God damn it, this movie is better than having the villain turn full villain as soon as she's found out. If she was always this fucking unhinged, how'd she keep it together for so long? Quick question, has anyone tried maybe closing their eyes? She's not exactly clockwork oranging their eyelids or anything. I mean, Helen now knows how this works. Use a thing. See that? That's a current readout. Click it. See the readout? So Edna invented, created, and manufactured this piece of technology that perfectly reads and handles every single one of Jack-Jack's powers in one night. And we're just gonna yada yada it? That is some next level incredible bullshit. <laughs> But doesn't Frozone already have a mask with eye protection? Does that really have no effect on this immediate hypnosis? These masks really piss me off, by the way. Incredible, pull over. Man, it sure did seem like the villains were hot on abducting these kids a second ago, but apparently immediately abandoned any pursuit. But we got Frozone. Bring him to the ship at DevTech immediately. Can I just get an instruction booklet on exactly how this hypnotech works? I mean, with the pizza guy, it was insinuated his actions were being directly controlled. But these guys seem like independent contractors who still have to be given verbal instructions. So. Which is it? Oh, I wish the Incredible could follow that boat. I have to sin this moment for being preposterously convenient, but I'm also smiling too hard at how awesome it is. I have straight to sin 
movie. Damn it! Also, yes, this moment is awesome, but did Dash forget he could run on water? I thought that was very well established in the first movie. At least he could catch the boat. Wait, who's gonna watch Jack Jack? Suck. Seriously, we're still doing the whole Babysitter's Club superhero edition thing? Is the whole point of this movie actually about the difficulty in procuring decent childcare? I like Void a lot and she's got some dope-ass powers. But the ability to track Violet to this exact location after seeing, like, 10 steps from the dirt cannot be one of them. Also, this fight is badass, but how are all Super's fully trained martial artists? Like, I get how Elastigirl and Mr. Incredible, who've been doing this for years, are capable in a fight, but here's teenage Violet throwing haymakers at Void, who's apparently downloaded the Kung Fu program from the Matrix. Movie has the audacity to show us the which way does the battery go twins, fluffy earbud man, and Captain Crochet without giving us any clue what their powers may be. I know I'm pointing out a lot of cliches in this movie, but it's got a surprising amount. I mean, did we really need this waiting on the elevator listening to Muzak during an action scene redo? No, 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 put him down! I know, right? Seems like the planned dependence of those goggles staying perfectly in place on every superhero would be a problem, even though they've somehow stayed on place during all sorts of violent fights and scuffles. How could I be mad? I'm proud. Until the next movie, when I'll chide you for using your superpowers again for no reason. But for now, let's hug this out. Laser eyes! Casual shooting of baby lasers toward your hostage brother is casual. Hey, you did this. Can you undo it? You want me to uncrush? Yes. Or if you're really going to stick with this nonsense about not being able to uncrush things, you could just crush it even further so that Mr. Incredible can get through. Or since he's been shown to have pretty immense superpowers, he could probably just bust his way through it himself. A reflux could melt it away. Or about a hundred other different ways that you could just get to the engine room quickly and immediately stop this boat. But climax has to climax, I guess. The reputations of superheroes are ruined. As are the chances Evelyn makes it out of this situation, considering she's spouting yet another unnecessary villainous exposition cliche. <laughs> this works. <laughs> considering this plane is going to continue its descent directly into the ocean, what exactly did pushing the autopilot do? Awesome, I'm sure there was no one on that busy coastal street of this populous city on a very nice looking day that's now dead. The insinuation here is that they all change into their super suits now, right? In the car? I'm just saying, growing up in the Parr family must be super awkward. This contract is void! Jordan fades back! Swoosh! And that's the game! <laughs> oh my god. Oh. God, that movie's awesome. I think it has been 14 years since the last one. God dang. I mean, from the first one to the second one, it has been 14 years. God, that's a long time ago. I hope there's going to be another one. Not, not, no. Just hope it doesn't take 14 years. Another 14 years. But five years, maybe, hopefully. Oh, but then, ah, oh, yeah. We'll just wait. You know, even if the Incredibles, if there's ne never going to be Incredibles 3 coming out, there's always Fantastic Four after Disney owns Fox and get back their freaking co uh, copyright. Comic book copyright characters. I want to see Doctor Doom versus the X Men, or or Doctor Doom versus Avengers, or whatever. Man, I just want to see Doctor Doom, like a, a proper Doctor Doom, or have at least like Norman Osborn like own like run everything, cause Norman Osborn is pretty powerful. <laughs> Like, screw Green Goblin, Norman Osborn made his own, you know, made his own stand and ran, and ran the world for at least a year, just like Kafka and Final Fantasy VI. Yeah! Anyways, if you like this video, press like. If you want to comment, comment. If you want to subscribe, please. And uh, peace!